Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. Even with the use of an excellent chroma keying plugin like Keylight, it's very rare that you'll have a perfect key on your first try out. Poor lighting, shadows, a bad backdrop, and even clothing color can make removing that green background very difficult. In fact, in most cases, even if you're working with people who truly understand the entire keying process and have the budget for a high-end setup, you're still more than likely to get footage that requires at least a little extra work, and sometimes a lot more than that, before you have a usable end product. Now, any experienced keying artist will tell you that one of the first things you need to do if your background isn't perfect, and that's almost always, is to create a junk mat, also called a garbage mask, which is simply an animated mask around the foreground elements that you're cutting out from the background. Often the outer parts of the chroma background aren't lit as well and have shadows or other problems. By isolating only a small area of the footage, you can then concentrate on keying out only the greens or blues closest to your actor without worrying about colors that may be more difficult to key out. If you were to try and key out all those different shades of green by raising the color tolerances, you might end up keying out part of your foreground object as well. By limiting the shades of green that you have to remove, you can get a more precise key without compromising the edges of your object because you're limiting the pixels being removed, which is a good thing, because it means that you're actually keeping more good pixels in that might otherwise be keyed out. Now the problem with a junk mat is that it has to be keyframed by hand, and unless you're willing to spend a lot of time creating and animating your mask, it's not as precise as you might like it to be. And therefore, you know, maybe not as helpful as it could be. Well, I've got a solution for that, and I call them super tight junk mats. By that, I don't mean, hey dog, check out my super tight junk mats, yo. Okay, I'm, I'm just not cool enough to pull that off. Anyway, my point is that I'm going to show you a method of quickly creating animated junk mats that are very tight so that you only have to worry about the pixels closest to your actor. And the best part about it is that it requires practically no work. And while the method isn't right for every situation, it has saved my behind on more than one occasion, and it might help you. And well, that's as good a reason as any to share it. So, here we are in After Effects with an actor on a green screen. Now, before I start getting hate mail, I fully admit that this is a CGI actor on a CGI backdrop, and the reason for that is that I can't legally use any of the footage that I've keyed out in the past, you know, unless I want to be sued. But that said, it will still allow me to demonstrate the principles needed for this to work. And before I get into it, let me say that this is not a tutorial on how to key, but rather it's a tutorial with the goal of adding another tool to your keying toolbox. To really learn more about keying, I'm going to recommend you check out Andrew Kramer's Creative Cow Master Series DVD, Serious Effects and Compositing. You can get more information on Andrew's training and other products at the location you're seeing here on your screen. Okay, let's get to it. To create a super tight junk mat, we first need to do a chroma key. It doesn't have to be a good one, even most of the default settings will do it. So in the timeline, I'll select my footage, and then I'll choose Effect, Keying, Key Light. Then, in the Effects panel, I'll click on the color picker for screen color, and in the comp window, I'll choose a green really close to my actor. Now let me just point out that, while this is a good start, this is by no means a perfect key. If I turn off the transparency display, we can really see that there's a whole mess of stuff that's still there. Normally a good way to handle this would be to slightly raise our screen gain, and I'll set that to 110, and then also go into the screen mat section and play with our clip black value. I'll start dragging the clip black until all of my background garbage disappears. It's hard to tell, but at about 49 or 50, everything has been keyed out. Now this looks okay, but if I zoom in here and look at my actor's wispy hair with key light on, and then look at it with key light turned off, I can see that I've lost a bunch of the more transparent hair areas than I'd like. This is especially a problem when dealing with blonde actors or actresses because blonde hair is thinner and lighter and therefore picks up more color from the background, which means more hair will be keyed out. Also, if I move to frame 17, which has a lot of motion blur, I can see that by clipping the black at this high a value, I've also pulled out some of the more blurry edges, which I don't like. And it's not like this is a terrible key, but I think we can do better by building a junk mat to get rid of the outermost edges of the footage. Now, as I mentioned, you can do this by hand, and there's nothing wrong with that, other than that it takes time and it isn't very precise. The technique I'm going to show you does it faster, better, and automatically for the most part, which will shave a bit of time off your project. So let's set that up. I'm going to reset key light by going into my effects panel and hitting the word reset at the top of the effect here. Again, for screen color, I'll choose a green closest to my actor. At this point, I'm not going to change any of the other settings. As before, you can see that there's still a lot of junk here that we don't want. Okay, now the magic. With the footage selected, choose Layer, Auto Trace. 
an auto trace dialog will pop up. Okay, first thing, make sure you have the option called preview at the bottom checked off so we can see a preview of our final result. Next, set the time span to work area, which tells After Effects to trace the composition's work area and not just the current frame. Next, make sure that the channel is set to alpha. This tells After Effects to trace the layer based on its alpha channel. Other options include red, green, blue, and luminance. Next, I'm going to jump down here to Threshold, which specifies in percentages the value that a pixel must have in order to be considered part of that channel. So in our case, if I set this to 20%, anything 20% or more opaque will be considered opaque during the trace, and anything less than that will be considered transparent. Now, that's too much for this piece of footage, so I'll set it to 60%, which as you can see, gets rid of the outer edges, while still keeping our actor in the trace. Next, set the tolerance to 1, which tells After Effects that it can deviate, at most, one pixel off from the original shape of the layer being traced. A setting of 10, and the deviation is quite high, as you can see. Higher numbers yield less precise results, but will process faster. Again, I'm going to leave this set to 1. I'll set the minimum area to 10, which means anything smaller than 5 by 5 pixels will be ignored. Just so you can see, setting this to a more precise 1 makes little or no difference, so it's really not worth bogging After Effects down processing minutia it doesn't even recognize. For corner roundness, I'll leave this at a neutral 50%. This property determines how round the corners are, with a higher number being more rounded. But since we're working with such a precise mask as it is, it really isn't going to make a difference. Finally, check the option called Apply to New Layer, which will create a new layer with masks that match the shape of our keyed footage. Alright, at this point, if you hit OK, After Effects will start to process the auto trace. In this case, it shouldn't take too long. On my computer, it's under a minute, but with longer or more complex footage, it could take a bit of time, but still a lot less than doing it by hand. By the way, if you have your info panel open, it will tell you what frame is currently being traced, so you can get a pretty good idea of how long it will take for the whole trace to go through. I'm going to flash forward in time a few seconds to where the auto trace is done, and as you can see, After Effects has created a solid layer with masks that almost perfectly match our footage. Almost, but not perfectly, which is not good enough. For this to work, we need to completely cover our footage here, so we're going to have to expand the mat. And to do that, Simply select the Auto Trace Solid and choose Effect Matte Simple Choker. Normally this effect is used to tighten or choke a mat, but in this case we're going to expand it. In the Effects Controls, let's bring the choke numbers into negative values. I think a setting of around 25 or so will give us the breathing room that we need. In your projects, this could be less or more. It really depends on your footage. Now, let's set this solid layer as an alpha mat for our current layer. In the track mat controls, for the video footage, from the pull-down, choose Alpha Mat. This tells the video footage to borrow its transparency from the alpha channel found in the layer above it, in our case, the auto-traced solid. Instantly, everything but our actor has been removed, and as you can see, things are looking pretty good. If I select my footage layer and turn off the key light effect, I can see that what I'm actually keying now is only this 25 pixel area around the edges of my footage. I don't have to worry about all that stuff we had on the outer edges. But as I scroll through time, I can see that there is still a little bit of junk I want to get rid of around the various edges of my actor at different times. So with my footage selected, I'll go into the effects panel and in the key light effect, I'll set my screen gain property up to 105. And in my screen matte settings, I'll set my clip black to 15. Well, you know, this looks pretty good to me. If we disengage the alpha mat, we can see that there is still a bunch of garbage hidden behind the junk mat, which we don't need to worry about. Consequently, when you compare it to the original key we did with no junk mat, we can see that more of our usable edges are being preserved, especially around the hair. Not bad. So what did we do here that's so innovative? Well, not much really. Junk mats have been a part of the keying process for a long time, so on that level, this is nothing special. But by using this method to create them, you're building those mats faster and tighter than if you had done it by hand. Now, this demonstration was a lot more controlled because it was using CGI footage, but the principles still remain the same for live action footage. And I want to mention that if you find that you're having a lot of trouble getting rid of the stuff within the edges, you can always try expanding the mat a little further and then adding a simple blur to the mat to sort of blend the edges of the junk with your background. 
depending on the footage, you might be able to get away with it. It's worked for me on like one or two occasions, but no promises. And you know, don't feel guilty about an imperfect key if it looks good. Keying is all about what looks best, not about the numbers. So if you can fool people into seeing what you want them to see, then that's usually good enough. Well, there you have it, the key to a tighter junk mat. Don't forget you can get the files for this and other podcasts at www.creativecow.net forward slash AE podcast. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.